Good day, CCFM. This is James Reyes from Exalt Ministry, and we are here today with Brother Edric Mendoza and his son Elijah to answer some of our questions for Sunday Fast Track. Good day, Brother Edric and Elijah. Hey, James. Here's our first question. Sometimes when we are in pain, well-meaning loved ones can give us advices that are against God's mm -hmm. principles. Mm -hmm. How can we use this as an opportunity to minister to them? Well, I think in this case, it's another opportunity to apply the principle of silence and listening, right? To show them that you care to listen to them and you can, you can in that way minister your love to them by showing, you know, I, I care about what you have to say. But of course, that doesn't mean you have to follow the advice. Right. And, and I would back it up a little bit, right? Yeah. My added two responses to what Elijah said is, you also need to be aware of God's principles and mm -hmm. His words so that when you receive the advice, you can better filter it. Now, assuming you do, and you see that that advice is not godly, aligned with what Elijah said of being quiet and listening well, you know, the Bible says to speak the truth in love. So I would break it down practically into those two responses. Start with love first. Hey, thanks for sharing that. I know you really want to help me out, so that's great. Don't say, Malina man sinasabi mo, you know, that's going to create all sorts of problems. So start with love, you know, show them that you're genuinely receiving it. And then this is the tricky part. When do you speak the truth? Will let the Holy, you need to let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Could it be that moment because you have a good relationship with them and say, Bro, mali naman yan eh. Gusto ko lang paalala sa'yo na this is not actually it. And this is what the Bible says. So then that becomes an opportunity for you to minister to them depending on your relationship, right? So, but if it, it might not be that moment. It might be another time. So, Break it down, apply the stillness, um, apply the genuine sincerity to listen and the love so that as you're doing that, then you find out what is the best time to then speak that truth. Mm. But as you do that, as I said earlier, make sure you know the truth. You are aware of God's principles so that if people give you advice, whatever the circumstance, you're, you're prepared to filter that through. Praise God for that. And here's our next one. If God doesn't take away my suffering or answer my prayers, does it mean that He loves me less than other people? Of course. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> That's why I have Elijah. Elijah, go for it. I, I don't think that means he loves you less than other people. I think it's good to refer back to the story of Job here, right? God was speaking to Satan in the prelude and he was saying, look, this is my servant Job. I love him. He is, well, he didn't say I love him, but he did call him out for being blameless mm. and being and righteous no and like upright. Him, right? And there's no one like him. And still Job suffered and he suffered for what looks like a long time. And that did not mean God loved him less what he said praise god for that here's our last one if god is sovereign does it mean that our suffering is caused by him right well, that's so that's a, a big question big james questions. right and many people ask that and they're very sincere mm. so what i would do is every time we're asked big questions about god i think the first response we should all have is humility mm. the bible says who can know the mind of god so when we pretend to know absolutely everything about what god is doing or causing like this then we we put him in a box mm. so having said that we do know what he has revealed to us in his words so let's unpack some of that the way i would answer this is i would be careful with the english language when it says caused right because the english language can be limiting so the better phrasing that i would have given what we know about God that he's revealed to us, is does God allow suffering? As we saw in the life of Job, yes. Does God allow suffering even from those who are doing everything right seemingly? Like in the life of Job, yes. Now, does he cause it? Meaning, is that what he wants? My answer to that is twofold from the Bible, right? God's will for us as a good father are good things. And when we look at Romans 8.28, God causes all things, all things to work for good for those, and this is the key, who love him, right? And have been called for that purpose, right? So it's important to, to, to highlight that because my second part of the response is God also hates sin. That has not changed in his nature. God in his sovereignty, we know, will allow things like suffering and tragedy and trials, right? So for the, the individual person right now, what you want to do on a very practical note is you want to ask if you are the person suffering why is God allowing this for me? Not the generic response. It's a long response because it's a loaded question. So that's what I would do. Mm. First, again, treat it with humility. Second, since we don't know the full mind of God, let's look at what, what we do know about Him that's revealed to us. And I've given you some things to think about. God is a loving, good Father, but He's also a very just and righteous God, right? Who hates sin and He can do what He wants because He is God. Having said that, bring it home to your life, right? 
look at that unique thing that's happening and then unpack the truths that you know. And there may be an answer you will get from those truths or it may be that God is saying, all you need to know is who I am. And that's the answer for you like we heard in the life of Job. Praise God for that. We can really unpack those questions when we, when we have this intimate relationship Amen. with the Lord. Amen, and with that, before we go, we would like to invite all the group members to take a step forward in your discipleship journey by leading a discipleship group or D group. To know more, visit our website at ccf.org.ph slash discipleship dash journey. And to all the dads out there, Woo! we would like to invite you and your family to join us next week June 18, as we have a special video and treat yes. prepared for you as we celebrate Father's Day. So that's it for our Sunday Fast Track. See you next week. See you.